Hi, this is Tony Mealy, and you are listening to Mike Delivers with Mike Biseglia. I know Mike from his days at CBS Sports Radio, where he worked day and night to give us all the best sports radio content around. I've only met him once, but he's a good dude. Although, he does like his steak completely raw, and he hates breakfast foods. So, good dude, but kind of a weirdo. Welcome inside. Mike delivers from his wife's 2017 Toyota RAV4. Here's your host, Mike Baseglia. That's right. This is Mike delivers episode number 123. And I'm your host, Mike Baseglia. And I'm coming to you from my wife's. No, I'm not. I'm not coming to you from my wife's 2017 Toyota RAV4. More information to follow. I've done 1,667 deliveries, have not, will not steal food from anybody. I have a 99% satisfaction rating, which means I'm really good at picking up food from a restaurant and dropping it off where that where somebody lives. 99% of the time, I'm right all the time. That was really cheesy. Don't forget, you can find the Mike Delivers podcast where all major pods are found. Stitcher, Spotify, TuneIn, the Pros Club Podcast Network, which I'll talk about. Also, an extension of this podcast is my Patreon page, Mike Delivers. There you get bonus content, like my wife putting her pantyhose around my eyes and shoving food in my face, and I have to try to guess what that food is. Blind food taste test, blind food reviews, where we pin a local spot versus a national chain of, for example, a chicken sandwich, Wendy's versus a local spot, and then just a library now, a catalog, as you might want to say, of Mike Delivers podcasts that have not been heard By the general public, these are all extra episodes, they're on my Patreon page, there's more than 40 episodes on there, and what's cool about these episodes is not only can you listen to them, but they are available via the video, so you can see my wife and I talking about food, talking about what the hell knows what, and you get the YouTube video version of it, that's all through the Mike Delivers Patreon page. Want to make your own podcast? We can do that too for you at The Pros Club. It's a podcast network I co-created with Anthony Pierno. If you would like to have your own podcast, reach out to me, MikeDeliversPod at gmail.com. If you want to do a podcast about being a DoorDash driver, if you want to do a podcast about being an Uber Eats driver, if you want to do a podcast for your small business, maybe you're looking to get awareness for your company, and you said, hey, you know what? Maybe doing a podcast would be a cool, unique way to get exposure for my business. We can do that too. Or I just want to shoot the shit and talk some sports. Email me, MikeDeliversPod at gmail.com. Or hit me up on all the social medias, Mike Delivers Pod on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can find me there. I have an interview with Young Mantis. He formerly with Barstool Sports now is doing the DoorDash Driving and if you follow him on Twitter, at YoungMantis2, you can see some of his bits, his gimmicks, his DoorDash videos that he's doing. So we'll have some fun talking from one experienced driver to, I want to say, a rookie driver. He lives in the Indianapolis area. I'll chat with him. You'll hear that interview in a matter of moments. Um, but before we get to any of that, let's talk about my wife's 2017 Toyota RAV4. So I've done zero deliveries this week. Why? Because I'm in a rental car. Why the hell am I in a rental car? Because I decided to do one more delivery where I was driving along, and I was actually a couple blocks from my house, and I'm going through a green light doing my thing, and I notice as I'm approaching the intersection, on the left side of me, there is a driver that is going through the light, and he is not stopping. He did not stop at the red light. He went completely through it. I noticed it, stopped. Luckily, stopped in time, but we still made contact. He noticed it a little too late. Because of the contact, another driver then sideswiped me because they had to abruptly stop because I had to abruptly stop because this guy drove into me who went through a red light and he has fucked up my wife's 2017 Toyota RAV4. First of all, it's really kind of embarrassing to even be saying this because if you know from the Patreon page, I tell the story about what happened to my wife's 2007 Toyota RAV4 and the whole gimmick of me talking on this podcast on these episodes is that I'm doing this in her car. And I fucked up two of them. Sucks. I mean, it really does suck. And I feel bad. I feel guilty. I feel terrible. I can't be on the road now getting, making money. So I'm not doing that. The car's in the body shop. So I get a rental car, but you can't use the rental to do Uber Eats. It's not allowed. So right now, 
this car is being looked at. It's taking forever because the insurance companies have to talk to this and this and this and this. And, this, and there's just so much paperwork to go through all this. What a major fucking pain in the ass. So I have, I'm have i stuck at 1,667 deliveries because somebody ran into me and I'm waiting to get that dealt with. And I, I just want to say... I will continue to do the Uber Eats. I just need the car back. But the whole thing sucks. And, like, luckily everybody was okay and involved that was involved in this accident. Because, you know, it is a little scary if you think about it. Guy's not paying attention. And he admitted to it. Goes through a red light. And just, like, what if, you know, what if I was not paying attention? And now it's like I'm driving in this rental car. And because I've been in two accidents in the last 10 months, it's like every little turn. I'm like so fucking paranoid and nervous after doing that because it's like if somebody else makes a mistake and it's no way to live. It isn't because I got to get on the road. I got to continue to drive. But it's like, my God, pay attention when you're driving, please. It does make a difference. And you just can't. I don't know. You just got to be careful. You really just have to really be careful. So the whole situation sucks. Uh, I hope to have the car soon. Uh, Who the hell knows? It's like impossible to get a hold of anybody. You know, people start talking, people go back and forth, and you don't hear from anyone. So that's where we stand right now on the 2017 Toyota RAV4. But it doesn't mean that the content will stop. Got a great interview here with Young Mantis. Uh, formerly with Barstool Sports, and he, the last couple of weeks, has gotten into the gig economy game, and he's now doing some DoorDash. He's got some awesome videos you want to watch on Twitter, at Young Mantis, the number two, at Young Mantis 2. Check those out. And the reason I'm actually reached out was my buddy Leon, no, not the cat, my friend Leon Oliver had said, are you seeing what Young Mantis is doing? He's doing DoorDash. He's stealing your gimmick. I was like, I got to reach out. We got to have him on. So I had a little fun on Twitter back and forth, obviously, I don't give a shit that he does it. He's not stealing my game. It's awesome to see other delivery drivers putting out awesome content. So let's get into it. A little Uber Eats, a little DoorDash love. Here's my conversation with a man in the Indianapolis area, Young Mantis. All right, it's the Mike Delivers podcast, and I'm excited to have on the line a DoorDash driver, Young Mantis, who did some great work at Barstool Sports. He's now doing DoorDash. He's in the Indiana area. Uh, I, of course, used to work at CBS Sports Radio. I've moved on from that, and now I'm an Uber Eats extraordinary driver. It's, it's my gimmick. It's what I do. I'm great at it. So I'm really excited to talk to somebody that's getting his foot in the DoorDash driver's seat. Young Mantis, thanks for coming on the Mike Delivers podcast. How are you doing? I'm good, man. I did my little push. push. <laughs> DoorDash, DoorDash. I don't know. That was just... Now, do, do you just find a rival, the- I guess. Does the bag really work? Does the bag actually keep the food hot? Do you, do you believe in that? Or, or is it just there for, you know, the consumer, the customer to make it, give the perception that the food's warm? So, you know, it is supposed to be used for warmth. But I guess uh, as a 24-year-old man, I've grown up with my uh, friends. We always go about the lane girl, uh, secure the bag. So every time I get food, I put it in the bag just to say secure the bag. So I just Snapchat to my friends. So other than that, I don't really see a use for it now. Yeah, I, I used to use it. And then I was like, you know what? It's just slowing me down. It, it just kills keeping, time. It kills time. And and now, as you know, with I'm sure in Indiana, there's probably a lot of the contactless delivery. So people mm-hmm. aren't even seeing that it was in the bag. So you give off the perception like you're good at what you're doing, right? Yeah, they don't wait for you at the door. You just put on the uh, front door, ring the doorbell. By the time you're in the car, they're already grabbing us. They don't even see you. Well, I've been I've enjoyed your uh, your videos on Twitter at Young Mantis too. Uh, some of the stuff where you got in the car and you're in the suit and you're driving. And then, uh, of course, some of your DoorDash drop-off ideas. How has it been? How's the experience been? Uh, you talked about getting laid off at Barstool Sports, but kudos to you for finding a second job. And I, as I've talked about on this podcast, I'm a big proponent of being a delivery driver. I think it's a good way to make money on your own hours. How has it been for you now in the DoorDash game? Oh, it's honestly, I never thought I'd be here. I stopped, you know, I want to thank God. I'm blessed. You know, it's, having work. it's the best job in the world, and I – and I don't mean that, but no, DoorDash, <laughs> it's really, a, it's, it's honestly not bad of a job. I think it's, it's, there's no better time to be a Uber Eats, Uber or DoorDash delivery guy than uh, the COVID thing. It's like, you're going to be making more money than years before because no one's leaving their house. So the perfect time right. to be doing it as a side hustle or a full-time job and making, just making the best out of it. But I really, I don't mind at all. I've been, so I live in Westfield, Indiana and like Westfield and Carmel are two of the top, like richest, uh, towns in the state so it's always i'll get some good like um requests and like a good amount of money each delivery Mm -hmm. so it hasn't really it's really like the money like 
It's been all right, but I haven't really been. I haven't done it five days in a row yet. I've been doing it like at nighttime when I'm bored. So if I'm, if I'm not door dashing, I'm like editing a video, just creating something. Has anybody uh, recognized you on a delivery going into a restaurant or maybe drop off at a door from all your work that you've, you know, your great work you did with Barstool? Not yet. Not yet. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for that. That's going to be like a real, that's going to be awkward, but I'm going to make it funny. See, kudos to you. Like my, I, I'll say this. I worked at CBS Sports Radio for eight years and I did not have an ego. Um, I was really shy actually there and I, I, I couldn't like be yeah. myself completely. But it's like my dream now to do a, a drop off somewhere and somebody go to me like, oh, you're the guy with the podcast and like want to take a photo with me. It, it's my dream to be recognized as an Uber Eats driver right now. Dude, it's, a, it's really cool to be recognized. I'll say you had Frank the Tank on one of your things. Yeah, Fra- well, Frank and I went in the car. Frank did Uber. He came in the car with me and we did yeah. Uber Eats together. And we had the experience <laughs> of going to different places and Frank was my co-pilot. So I, That's I, amazing. Yeah, I mean, it was it was something else. I mean, we really we really had an incredible time. He couldn't get over the fact that somebody ordered a Burger King uh, order from Belleville to wherever the fuck it was in New Jersey. I can't remember. He freaked out. Does that seem on brand with Frank? That's so on brand. That's funny you mentioned that because there I have noticed my first couple of days there'll be people like ordering from like almost like downtown to Westville, like a thirty minute drive. Like what? What's the point when there's one a location right downtown close to you or two? It's just, you're you're definitely gonna have your food so cold, like I, ice frozen. And then three, all that gas. We don't get our gas pay, of course. So you gotta be, you gotta consider the the distance from everything. Do you think if it was a DoorDash Uber Eats driver off, you would be better than Frank the Tank, or you do you think Frank would ultimately, with some tutelage and some time, end up becoming the better driver? Oh man, I did. Did you watch the video of the uh, um, extra raw dog with the behind the scenes of Frank the Tank's hot dog review? I have not seen that one. No. So the wonton Don KB and Nick they made that video with a little uh, Sasquatch. Just great. It's behind the scenes of how Tank does his hot dog reviews. Mm-hmm. And Tank, there was a footage of Tank driving down the road, and it was he's an incredible driver. Right? Uh, the exact speed limit. So if he does the exact speed limit, doesn't go you know five over, then I might be you know get into the house faster i don't know i'm just saying he it's fun it's funny you it's funny you say that because when we were driving we didn't record this but he told me that he doesn't love going on the highways it's not yeah. it's not his thing so he would be like going 35 and a 55 and like everybody's flipping him off and cursing at him he's like no this is the speed i'm going at deal with it <laughs> <laughs> that's so frank i love that guy <laughs> that, very frank um okay so I actually have an insider in Carmel, Indiana. He's like the the Woj of Uber Eats DoorDash drivers. So he was curious on your end because he says in Carmel, there are a lot of roundabouts and it's a very tricky area to drive. And he wants, so I guess I'm asking the question, but have you ever spilled food because of those tricky Carmel roundabouts? Yes. You didn't think that question was coming here today on the Mike Delivers podcast. Inside information on the area you're delivering in. Before I say that, Carmel is known for two things, roundabouts and hot moms. I, these moms are incredible. I have I used to work at Dick's Sporting Goods just, just to see the moms walk. It was incredible. But anyway, <laughs> the roundabout, I have not spilled any food or uh, ranch or anything, but I, uh, I, I, I had a black well, I had my general, my online general studies degree in my back seat. So the first roundabout just slid across and hit the door. So I had to buckle it up. But other than that, I haven't spilled any food yet or anything. Thank and that Car- in, in Carmel, Indiana is a good, you were saying a good area to drop off a lot of good orders, you know, high end deliveries. What, what's been the restaurant you think most people in the Carmel area have, have ordered from? Oh, Chick-fil-A for sure. Mm. Chick-fil-A, I, mean, I did a lot of those. Those two popping up like from 5 PM to like eight. Chick-fil-A, they never stop. They're always packed. Are you doing, is that drive through related or do you get to go into the restaurant? Well, how, how does that work for Chick-fil-A? Uh, yeah, you just go in the um, parking spot, go in. They have a little table for so it says DoorDash, pick up, and they'll just hand on the table and grab it. Have, what's uh, been, can I ask you a question? Yeah, go, please, of course, what, yeah. What's been, what's been your biggest payment for one delivery? Biggest payment for one delivery. So that, that includes tip, of course, obviously. Yeah. And I've never, I've never done DoorDash. I got to be honest. I've only done Uber okay. Eats. But total it's, DoorDash, it's, it's, it's not for, it's for the few, the proud, the strong. Just I saying. understand. No, my goal one day is to make my way up there. You know, um, I have a degree from Syracuse University, which right now I'm using to be an Uber East driver. Maybe one day I can aspire to be a DoorDash driver. You yeah. need that degree, but then you have that. That's right. I'm following your lead. 
Um, I would say post tip and everything. I want to say about thirty seven dollars for Dang. one. Mm hmm. This was uh, I delivered to West Caldwell, New Jersey. It was a hibachi restaurant that was in Clifton, and I took this order to West Caldwell, New Jersey. And I believe uh, I might be misquoting myself here, but I believe like. The Sopranos, the family lived in West Caldwell, New Jersey. Uh-huh. So imagine, obviously, if you've seen the show, like humongous mansions. So the, oh, yeah. the food was a, it was a ton of food. And then they, they, they give you the projected tip, which they said would be like $10, 11 They ended up, they ended up giving like a $27 tip. And you, and as, and as you know, I, I, you can tell me what your largest order has been. But when, and I and actually, I'm curious how it works with DoorDash, but with Uber Eats, you'll get the tip that comes later. So they'll give you a projected amount, but then you'll actually see what it is. The excitement level, the adrenaline rush that I got from seeing somebody give me $27. I mean, it's an instant high that you can't replicate anywhere else on another job. It's like a daydream. <laughs> a wet daydream. That's how I do it. Um, you know, I was like, oh, so I hit my biggest one last night. It was uh, nice. 13, 13 25 for a sushi place. And that was that was total. That was um, tip included plus the meal. Yeah, it plus was the a, delivery fee. Yeah, it was total. I think the tip was like, I want to say eight, eh, seven dollars maybe. Right. Still pretty, like, oh, thirteen bucks. Oh, yeah. No, it's. I mean, it, and, and I can say this. And when you put together between like a six to eight hour stretch, and you do these, and and I, I, like for me in the New Jersey area, I've gotten better at knowing which areas to be in, which ones to decline areas to start mm-hmm. you know it, it becomes strategic you can make and i've done this you can make like on an average at uber eats i think it was like 28 dollars an hour which is much better than if you were just going to sign up and get some part-time job somewhere i mean 28 bucks an hour is not too shabby that's great i was actually i was doing a walmart delivery and this one dude was like hey how you like doordash i'm like oh so i rook you but i'm getting the hand of it he's like should i quit walmart i'm like uh yeah first of all you should quit walmart for anything second of all yeah join the dash <laughs> Do they have something for you? Like if you can hand them out your uh, promo code or something, you can get a referral fee. Cause like at the end of this podcast, I was totally going to make sure I send you my promo code on Uber eats. Cause like, if you do a certain amount of deliveries, I get 500 bucks. Is there anything like that with DoorDash? I got, I got, yeah, I got a DoorDash for you. If I, if I refer a friend to join, I get a hundred dollars. Right. So they have the same kind of the referral gimmick. Yeah. And then if you're a customer, I got, if you say just dash it, you get like $5 off 15 bucks. Mm, nice. Have you, uh, have you stolen any food? No, I haven't. Have you been tempted? Oh, happy life. I said, you know, what was the, what was the meal that got in your car? And you were like, you know what? Nobody will know. Uh, there's this place called, uh, well, it's called Big Hoffa's Barbecue. My God, it just smelled. It just smelled nut worthy. It was amazing. Well, but but the, those those bastards, they they like staple it and tie the, like the double tie the bag. Mm. So there's no way you can get away with anything. So ugh. this has crossed my mind, and I would never do this. I'm, I'm just saying this crossed my mind. But I would never do this. First of all, we're in a pandemic. It's disgusting. I understand that. So I'll start with that caveat. But like to bring your own stapler in the car, so that you know when you undid the bag, you could restaple it, and nobody would know. I, I thought about like, and then we could get like. Mike delivers sponsored staplers for food stealing. That crossed my mind at some point. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, you need to put a Mike delivers sticker. That's what you should do for your stuff. I know. I need, I need to do that. I've been trying to figure out how to make a – well, I have a logo. You can probably see in the, in the Zoom thing. I've been trying to figure out how to make um, swag for a month, and I'm so bad at all these freaking websites. Every one, I just, like, upload image size. Not the right size. Upload an image. Oh. You can't get – it's just driving me nuts. You have any recommend, I, do you have any stuff you use or anything? Honest, honestly? Dude, I asked, I asked made my own YouTube channel uh, last week, and I had put like, I was making my own little banner, and it kept telling me like the pixel size was too, the pixel size was too much. So I had right. like my high up like smart friends do it for me. So um, uh, that's always a that's a bitch. It, it but, is well because but uh, but I want to use it because I think uh, you know someone wants to like like I know after you do this interview you're gonna probably be buying like a hoodie or something or a sweatshirt. You're like oh man I have to I have to wear our Mike delivers sweatshirt around town now. I mean you probably have to do so you'll do it. So I know I got to get it done. It's like, it's like a Colts fan wearing a Patriots jersey. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, exactly. Now, have you have you done any deliveries on an NFL Sunday yet? I have not, no. What is that like? It's awesome. I mean, it's, okay. it's awesome. It's really good now, too, because people don't go to – I mean, in New Jersey, people aren't going to Giants or Jets games. Yeah. So 
I mean, not that that would really impact there's so many stupid people there, so many people, but I mean, Sundays, it's like never ending pool of money. You could, if you wanted to Sunday to Sunday, you can make between uh-huh. 300 and $400. It's doable. Holy crap. That, might, yeah. that sounds about right. Especially. So I was living in a uh, union city, New Jersey. I moved back here in, in mm. the, back in May, but you know, union city is so, so boring. It's cheap, but it's boring, but Hoboken and Jersey city are always popping. Oh yeah, you know. Oh yeah, those areas for sure. Now those areas it could be difficult on the driver part of things. You know, like going in and out of restaurants because it's it's basically like it's not like New York City, but it's a big enough city where parking could be a serious pain in the ass. If, oh, yeah, that's you, terrible. You know what I mean on that front? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that's always um, tricky on that getting getting in it. Do you have any do you have any tips? Do you think for any of the younger drivers, any of the younger dashers, Uber Eats people that that might want to get involved in the game? definitely uh get one of those like little uh things that the 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 phone holders that stick onto your front Mm. shield yes those always help keeps you from you know getting a head-on collision uh always you you got a part in the handicap spot there's no uh, the the chances of like stephen hawkins pulling up and like the minute yours like point zero one uh I can tell you, like, I wouldn't say I've parked in a handicap spot, but the amount of illegal double parking that I have done in the last year and a half, I mean, it's like, it's, it's scary. I'll, I'll tell you a story from the road. This is a true story. I'll share this with you. I did a double park and a cop came over or like a parking attendant. And I ran back and forth with the restaurant. I convinced her not to do this. She's like, no, 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 no. doesn't matter. You Uber Eats drivers, you think you, you own the road. You can do anything. You guys think you can do what you want. I'm like, I'm so, I'm like, come on, give me a break. I'm trying to make $6 here delivering chicken nuggets. Calm down. <laughs> so finally she lets me go. It's okay. I go into the restaurant and I explain to the guy what happened. And mm-hmm. he tells me that she's an Uber Eats driver at night and is actually doing deliveries. And I was like, you think she'd have a little bit more respect for me and understanding wow. of the whole situation. She's give, trying to give it, I mean, you, who would do that it's like your own family right there she's a narc seriously undercover cop wow who would have thought i bugged my mind do you have any uh any stories any close calls or anything that really from the first couple of weeks of doing oh. it that, that's like you were like this is kind of bizarre i wish i would have filmed uh, i did before i did the video i did my own little test run to see how it works so yeah. one night i delivered uh this pizza to a guy and i'm walking up and um i said leave at front door so I was walking my way to the front door and I see him, I see this guy like, look, I'm walking through his grass. Oh, do you walk through grass? Do you go, do you go like around the sidewalk? I go around the sidewalk. Sometimes I'll walk uh, through the grass on the very end on the way back. How about you? That's a good question. I'm either, I'm either at the very end of the back or I'm just like, you know what? There, there's no way they're, they're probably watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll march my, march my butt up there. Um, anyway, the one guy, I said, leaving the front door. So I'm walking halfway through it, half grass, half sidewalk, whatever. Right. And then he opens the front door. He's like, he's, he's looking forward, but I'm still on the side, coming from the side. So he's still looking straight forward. He goes, who goes there? And I go, hey, it's Austin from DoorDash. And he's still looking straight forward. And I'm, I'm creeping up. He's like, oh, you said, said DoorDash. I said, yeah. He's like, okay, just, uh, just just put it right in front of me. So I put the piece of right on his feet. I look up and he's just, he's blind. <laughs> he's like, Thanks, thank you. You get you say it's right there. I'm like, yep. I pointed. I'm like, right that. I'm like, uh, oh yes. There you go. And he's like, still looking straight forward. Like, is dude was blind. I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> did he? Did he? I mean, did, did he get the pizza though? Did he pick it up eventually? Got, I, I saw him. He. I saw him struggle a little bit. One hand on the door. One hand trying to find the pizza. <laughs> Grabbed it. I said, enjoy, brother. <laughs> enjoy that pizza. You know what? It's crazy though. And you, you, you indirectly bring up an interesting point, but it's like you know, pre COVID, if you wanted to just, you know, open the door for somebody or be courteous for somebody. Now it's like, you know, sometimes you just got to be like, you're on your own here with this pizza. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Shout to the blind before I say anything else, but <laughs> yeah, you gotta, uh, yeah, it's hard to be, um, yeah, more courteous and work, and work for that tip. Yeah, it, it, it is. Really have, work for that tip. Do you have any like go-to lines or tricks of the trade that you use to get to get more tips like sometimes for example you would i would write things like hey restaurant was a few minutes behind but i'm on my way keeping the food warm in my in in my doordash bag i'll see you in 16 minutes with your lasagna uh 
Also, I haven't done any of that yet. If anything, before I drop it off, I say their name to confirm, and I'm like, yeah. it's like, hey, Sarah? Yeah, <laughs> I thought so. Hey, you go. Have a good one. Just like that. It, it is. Um, I, I find this that Corny happens. Stuff. I find this that happens with myself now that I've done, um, I wrote it down, 1,667 deliveries. Dang. Like, uh, this is, I'll drive past people's houses, and I'll be like, I've delivered Thai food to them. I've been to that. Like, you'll start going, like, I've been to these houses, and it's it's kind of a scary concept because well, I've been doing it a oh, lot it longer is. than you have. Have you know Have you driven past people's houses and been like, I I've been there. I remember that place. Yeah, I was driving. I'm like, yeah. Oh, I've been there. I I know that address. I know social security. I know how many kids has got. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's it's crazy Wonderful. too. I've looked up people's houses, how much they're worth after I've been like in New Jersey. There's some homes I'm like just stunning, just stunning homes. And I'll look it up and be like, that thing's worth 1.3 million dollars. I hope you don't do that on some of your drives. Oh, I would never. Who <laughs> me? Sorry, I got allergies. I no, that's allergies. fair. You're allowed to have allergies. I mean, you are. You know, that's, that's just true. Though, like you're in a car and you're driving around. Like sometimes you sneeze, sometimes you fart. Like th- real life people, things do happen. You just you know you have your hand wipes, your sanitizer, and you take care of business. Yeah. So really, you know, a lot of jobs. Like if you if you come in feeling sick, they'll send you home. You can't really. Do you send yourself home if you're feeling kind of ill? Or just keep going. No, you got to go home. You, I mean, you got to do it. I, I had COVID, and I said I'm not driving. Couldn't do it. You got to. I think I got to hit the protocols. Not on the road. Not happening. I think I had COVID twice this year. I you think do twice. Definitely had it once, but one before. Uh, it turns out one Super Bowl weekend, my friends came to New York, and uh, one of them left the stove on, like, like at the very like I set on one, so the lightest degree and it was on for 24 hours and none of us knew so at the gas and the fumes got into like our lungs and i was Ooh. like i thought i was gonna die but i had like the covid symptoms so i cough in for two weeks but then then i had it back in july just lost my taste buds and all that for three weeks and then came back but yeah yeah the, COVID just, I, be, be his butt uh the taste bud thing is interesting you say that so when i i had covid it was early march and nobody knew about COVID, like no, some of the symptoms yet. And I remember my wife yeah. and I got from this Mexican restaurant and I was like, I ate it. And I just remember being like, and this place stinks. I was like, this is not that good. And then like, I realized later I felt bad. I was like, oh, I had no taste buds. I was like, no wonder. Yeah. My wife was like, I thought the place was great. I'm like, no, no, food's not good there. But, but the taste bud thing is real. Dude, I'm having no taste buds is probably one of the worst experiences of my life. Mm. it's so depressing yeah although you can eat healthy and you'll be fine but it's like dang i want that oreo i want that chick-fil-a sandwich like i can't even taste it right it's not it was like it's not worth the calories what are you eating yeah. in, during your drives do you pack like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich do you have soups do you have um different uh, different cuisines that you're heating up what are you typically going to with the car meal or are you eating beforehand just so you're you know you're loaded up and you can focus on the road I'm usually eating beforehand. If anything, like I'll door dash after a workout, so I like a protein mm. shake. But really, I'm not really munching on anything. Or maybe drink of water, of course, but nothing really. I never thought about packing a PB and J or grabbing something from the gas station yet. Anybody uh, treat you like shit at any of the restaurants? Any like you know, kind of jerky restaurants? Yes, Walmart. Just I mean, that's all I need to hear. First of all, is Walmart. Like, they, they only. I have a theory of Walmart, like. They don't care who you are. Those hire you. Like you should have to pass a common sense human test to work at Walmart. It is they only hire the dumbest? Like, I feel dumb having an online journal studies degree. I feel like uh, I get a doctor when I meet these guys working. So at Walmart, is it? Are you going in there and doing the shopping, or is it like they're they're like a bag of a prepared three items and you take it? How does that work? So you walk in, there's a big sign that says like for for uh, delivery drivers like here. So you walk yeah. up to it, and there's already a, there's a line for like trust for uh, customer service, but then there's like an area for where your stuff should be dropped off. But this is one just I hate saying it. This one big fat like job with the HUD dude. I don't know his name, but this guy is the worst. He like he thinks he like he knows he thinks he thinks that the CEO of Walmart. He's like just coughing up a storm, and it's, he's just talking like, oh my god, they got a cheeseburger in his mouth. But I asked him like, hey man, DoorDash. Uh, he's like, did you get did you get an email confirmation? No, man, I'm a DoorDash, like I said. Not, not. He's like, oh yeah, haha. Don't know how to do that. Let me find someone. Then he's like, run off. And I thought I'd ask a sixteen year old kid, hey man, she just in the back. He's like, oh yeah, sure. And then the big fat dude will yell at the kid. It's just, it's a disaster. 
Yeah, I've not. I have. I've not had any Walmart. Um, don't do it. I haven't. Do I haven't it. had any. I don't. I don't know if they're on Uber Eats. They might. It might not be an Uber Eats gimmick. It might not be there. I'm not sure if we have that. Yeah, it might I don't not think be. we do. But it sounds like I, I, I'm. I'm lucky that uh, that I don't. Um, you know, if I, I'll just ask this. Then I have a couple of questions. I ask all my guests to come on the podcast. What, uh, in conclusion, just doing this a couple of weeks, um, met your expectations. What you thought it would be, better, worse, um, and is it something you think you'd want to keep up with? Um, it, it's honestly what I imagined. It's really, I didn't think it'd be that bad. It really isn't. It's, like a, it's, a, it's every, it's, like a, it's a hustler's paradise, you mm. know? Good job, be smart with the orders, which one's worth it, which is not. How long can you do? How, how many can you do in a certain time limit? And, uh, I, you know, I really don't, I'm not, I don't see myself doing this long term. I still like being a, I was labeled as a content creator at Barstool. I see myself as an entertainer in just different forms. So I really want to, be my own boss. I've never worked a nine to five. I've worked for, like, as a ball boy for the Colts, worked at bar stool, worked like part time jobs, but I, I don't want to work for anyone else under anybody else. I want to see how far I can make it. So, but I mean, this job, I mean, it's, it's still a good, it's still a good way to make money at the end of the day. It's really, it's really a cool gimmick, cool job. I like it. All right, good stuff. Cool gig, cool gig, not gimmick. A cool gig in the gig economy. It's a cool gig. Young Mantis. All right. I end all of my podcasts with a couple questions. I ask all my guests. I yeah. just ask for your honesty. If that's cool with you. All right. Yeah. Yeah. What do you prefer? Cake or pie? Oh, pie. Why? So my mom has, my mom makes the best Oreo pie. And I think, uh, I, I first had Oreo pie at Eden Park in Pittsburgh. I fell in love with it when I was young. My mom makes it for my birthday and stuff. Pie or cake is, I mean, cake's good, but I think I'm a very, I'm not really into sweets. Mm. So I'm dead set Oreo pie. I would never go out and get a cake. I would never, like, if I looked at a cake at a party, I wouldn't, like, be obsessed over it. They're both good, but just Oreo pie is all I need. Eden Park, I'm glad you brought that up. So my wife's from Pittsburgh. My mom's from Pittsburgh. Um, totally coincidental on that front. So I've been going to wow. Eden Park forever. And I know we, my wife and I actually did some taste tests of those pies, which are on the Patreon page. Uh, Mike delivers. Anybody wants to sign up? Why not? How, what is your Pittsburgh connection? Why are we going to uh, Pittsburgh oh, in Eden Park? Besides me, my whole family grew up in Pittsburgh. Mm. I was born in Indy, but all of them were from Pittsburgh, uh, North Hills, Pittsburgh, or North Hills, Pennsylvania. Okay. So is, do you go back? Have you ever, you go back there a lot? Yeah, we go there for Christmas, and then see how it was. Uh, we go there for like a week. Go to Permani Brothers. We go to Eden Park, uh, Belisarios, um, North Park Lounge. I don't know if you had that. It's pretty cool too. It's a good little cool spot. Nice. But Eden Park is is is. People always say Big Boy's the best. Eden Park's better. Hell yeah! No, I you, you'll have to listen to my previous episode. I had um former NFL quarterback Gus Farad on, and he's from Pittsburgh. So him and I mm-hmm. just did forty minutes on all Pittsburgh restaurants and That's talked so about cool. it. So um. That's cool to hear the Pittsburgh connection. I like that. All right, the strip, uh, the strip districts, yeah, cool spot too. Strip district, a lot of good Italian, a lot of good Italian Macaroni food. Place, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got married in Pittsburgh. See, we're bonding here over the Pittsburgh connection thing. Hell yeah! But is it tough as a Colts fan? Then do you have like all these Steeler families? Like, what's that like? Oh god, it's just it's gotta suck. I mean, Colts fans are trying to like you know we're calm, we'll watch the game, we'll celebrate, but like I mean every every place like just screaming at the top of your lungs no matter what. <laughs> But Pittsburgh has like the part of the most diehard fan base in sports. Yeah, no, they love their Steelers. They're they're yeah. good this year. They're seven and zero. Yeah, they're, and well. they're best team in the AFC. <laughs> yeah, my team sucks. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm a Giants fan, not a Jet fan. I'm not gonna, not that bad. Uh, it doesn't. They both suck the same. Yeah, I feel like we've got potential. We've got some. All right, enough of this sports shit. Better, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, waffle or pancake? Oh man, oh god. Okay, so. Back to Pittsburgh. I remember having. You ever had the Pancake House? Yes, 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 yes. This, I had like the first time ever in North Hills when I was like, I don't know, six or seven, mm. and I just the best pancakes ever. There's some in Indy too. They're not quite the same, but they're still pretty good. Okay. But a waffle. A waffle still hits too. I got to have an answer though. They're, I know I they're both delicious. Okay, I can do a pancake anywhere, but I can only do a waffle at my at my house. So pancakes. Okay. Best thing you ate in the last week? Uh, probably, probably. Um, no, I'm never. I'm still a virgin. Uh, probably. Uh, uh, 
Okay, I'll say this. My most disappointed meal was that mm. uh, big Hoppers barbecue that I mentioned. It was good, but it was told to be like, the best barbecue in India. It was, it was good at best. So that was disappointing. Best thing I've had in the last week. Oh, man. Oh, man, that's tough. I know. Oh, I got it. Okay, once a week, I always do steak and shake. Mm. have to do it. So late night steak and shake, it's is so good. What's your go-to? Uh, triple steak burger with cheese, fries, and side of cheese sauce. You knew that right away. No hesitation in your answer there. It was impressive. Grew up on that, baby. <laughs> and then the final question, I just asked for your honesty. It's a year from now. You're sending out wedding invitations. Do you invite me to your wedding? Dude, I've never even like had a girlfriend. I've never gotten past first base. So the wedding would never happen. But would I invite you? My first, like, uh, well, yeah, door di- delivery drivers are all set together. <laughs> come on. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uber and DoorDash come Brand together. Bring the wife. The whole I'll bring my cat, my kid. Would you ever would you ever experiment with Uber? Would you ever, you know, dip your toe yeah. in there? You would especially, do it. Especially if DoorDash fires me for some reason. Then yeah, I'll just hop on the <laughs> Uber wave and I'll hop on the Dreb Hub wave. Let's keep I'm a free agent, just keep signing the new team. That's right. Well, young man, just thank you for uh popping on the Mike Delivers podcast. Thanks for talking about your experience as a DoorDash driver. Uh the time's appreciated. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, Mike. This is awesome. Good time there, talking with Young Mantis, getting a feel for what it's like doing some DoorDash in Indianapolis, getting a vibe for the town, a flavor, what it's like for him, some of his stories from the road. Highly appreciate, really enjoyed that. Don't forget, you can see the video version of this podcast. Check it out, Mike Delivers Pod on YouTube. Our conversation via Zoom is there for you to to enjoy. Go ahead and subscribe and get more great content on the Mike Delivers Podcast podcast youtube page my convo there with young mantis episode on thursday drop in another theme it's battle royale side dishes so side dishes your favorites battling it out thursday my wife and i get the challenge of mashed potatoes mashed potatoes from applebee's mashed potatoes from pizzeria uno if you want to see which one I liked more, head on over to Mike Delivers Pod on Twitter and Instagram. You can actually see me trying these things blindfolded. And that one I like, the full review, the full recap, that episode drops on Thursday. This has been the Mike Delivers Podcast, episode 123. Thank you to my Toyota, my wife's Toyota RAV4 2017. We will see you soon. I miss you, buddy. Thank you to Young Mantis for coming on the podcast. Appreciate that. Appreciate giving your love on the DoorDash side of things. Thank you to the beautiful noise. That's the music you hear right now. This podcast would not be the same without it. Love the beautiful noise. This has been episode 123. We'll see you Thursday where we get all mashed potato-y for episode 124.